Okay, guys, I want to cover the vehicle routing assignment, okay, for the, for the discrete optimization class. Okay, so the vehicle routing problem is one of the most fascinating problems, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful research area. They are, it's a very, you know, applicable in practice. There are a lot of practical application. There are many variants, you know, the people have spent their lives, you know, working on these things. You know, this is one of the areas of, you know, optimization that I like the most. Okay, so what we're going to see, in th and this is also very difficult in general. Okay, so what we're going to see here is that we're going to look, the, the assignment is going to be one particular type, which is called the capacitated VRP. This is by far not the most difficult, you know, VRP problems, but it's, very it's still very, very challenging. So you, you have to think about it as, you know, like the TSP, except that, you know, on steroids. Okay, so we have many vehicles, and we have these additional constraints on what these vehicles can do okay so uh, vehicle routing okay so this is a simple you know um, uh, formulation here that you're going to see where we already see some of the input data okay so you have a bunch of different sites here okay one of them is the warehouse that's where the vehicles are starting okay so this is for Calton and Victor I want to call this a depot but they like warehouse so I'm very friendly with my collaborators so we're going to call that a warehouse okay so for every one of them you see a coordinate okay so that's where they lie on the plane okay and you see also so some demand there. That's uh, think of it as you know this is the vo you know the, the kind of weight that you are collecting at every one of these uh, at one of uh, at every one of these location. Okay, so um, so you will have four vehicles, for instance, in this particular area. The capacity of this vehicle is going to be ten. So the weight that you are picking up at every one of these location can never exceed ten. Okay, this is the warehouse. I told you warehouse, not depot. Warehouse. Okay, and so this is essentially one tour. Okay, which has a cost of eighty point six. Okay, that's the distance which is traveled by the vehicles. You see one vehicle here. I believe this is green, right? And another one which is probably purple. Okay, uh, and so that's what the vehicles are doing. They satisfy the capacity constraints. Okay, and. Obviously, they visit every customer exactly once. So this is another of these tour, which is actually uh, uh, better. Okay, so the cost is only 68.3, and once again, it satisfies the capacity constraint. So the goal of the assignment is to find these better tours for every one of the vehicles, satisfying the capacity constraint, minimizing the total travel distance. Okay, so formally, this is. Oh, you can describe the problem. No, this is an impossible formulation, right? So don't try to run this. This will almost never run anywhere, okay? But this is, for, you know, stating what the problem is, okay? So you have N vehicles, okay? And uh, you have N customers and N locations, sorry, and uh, V vehicles. Uh, for every one of the location, okay? So we have the demand for that location, DI. And we have the location in the plane, you know, given by XI, YI, okay? Now, the capacity of the vehicle is this constant C. They all have the same capacity for simplicity. You can generalize that if you want, okay? And essentially, a, a, a solution to this problem is going to be a sequence of customer visit, okay, or location visit for every one of the vehicles. So we're going to call that TI. That's the sequence of locations that are visited, except from the warehouse, except the warehouse, by every one of these vehicles, okay? So what you are minimizing is essentially the travel distance, okay? So this is essentially moving from the, f the, the warehouse to the first customer. Then this is a travel distance between, you know, every one of the, of the customers that you are visiting. And at the end of the day, you have to get back to the depot such that the truck can start on the subsequent day. Okay, now this, the, the sequence of customers that you are picking for one particular vehicle has to be smaller than the capacity of the vehicle. Uh, the, yeah, the, has to be such that the demand of this customer is smaller than the capacity of the vehicle. And then you want to be sure that uh, every one of the, the location, every one of the location is visited exactly once. Okay, so that's what this constraint is expressing. Okay, basically you look at J, which is a particular location. Uh, you know, the, the constraint J belongs to TI is telling you if that particular location is visited by vehicle I, and when you sum over the vehicle, that is to be equal to one, okay? Of course, you know, there are very few, no, no solvers that I know, well, actually, you know, they can be, well, no, no real solver that I know, which would actually express that constraint directly like it is stated here, okay? So essentially, this is, this is the formulation. We'll have input-output, right? So the input for this problem is going to be simple, right? So that's all the stuff that I have been going through in the previous slide. We have the number of uh, location. We have the number of vehicles. We have the capacity of the vehicles. And then for every one of these locations, we have the x and y coordinate. Even for the depot, it's not necessarily 0, 0. And, we have the d and, and the first number is actually the demand at that particular location. For the warehouse, okay, that value is 0. 
Okay? So basically what you get here is a long list of demand location, demand location, demand location, and so on for all the location. Okay? The output that we want okay, for this particular problem is the value of the objective function. That's the first line, option, the value. Okay? And then we want the sequence of customers that are visited by every one of, uh, of these vehicles. So you see the first vehicle is going to start from zero, then visit a number of customers, and go back to zero. Okay? So that's basically the sequence of visit of that particular vehicle. Same thing for the subsequent one, and for all the vehicles that we have. That's the output that we need to check. Okay? So that's essentially the input-output specification. Um, so for instance, this is the input for this particular simple example. Okay? So we have five location. Okay? So we have um, four vehicles, and the capacity of the vehicle is 10. Okay? And this is essentially the demand at every one of these locations and the various points. Okay? So the first one is the warehouse, zero demand. The location of this point is zero, zero. And then you see the other one, you know, the demand are basically three for every one of them. And you see in this particular case the various location of these points in the, in the plane. Okay? So 0, 10, minus 10, 10, 0, minus 10, and 10, minus 10. Okay? That's the input. This is the output, which is provided by the first bad tour that we saw, okay, bad set of tours that we saw, the value is 80.6, and it's not optimal, okay, so that's why you have the zero flag over there, okay. What you see here is basically uh, the sequence of the first, uh, the first big tour, okay. It started zero, okay, it goes to one, and then it goes to two, and then it goes to three, and then go back, okay. So that's what you see in this particular one, zero, one, two, three, zero, okay. The next one is zero, four, zero, you know, this is going to four and then going back. And the two other vehicles, the drivers are very happy, they can sleep, the, you know, they can spend the day sleeping. Okay, so that's essentially the output for this particular for this particular example. Okay, uh, yep, and this is explaining which of these tools is actually covering the output. Okay, so now this assignment is really really hard. It's very close to real application. There are real application based on this actually. Uh, so there are ways, to, there are various ways to model it. You can use a TCP approach. You can look at a MIP approach. You can look at a local search approach or hybridization of these things. Okay. Uh, they are all connected to the TSP in some fashion. You can see that as a color CAP, multicolor CAP TSP. Okay? And so you will have to be kind of creative, and, and every one of these solutions is going to be interesting. Okay? Now, if you use a CP model, in general, one of the things that is nice here is modeling everything as a big, uh, looking for one large tool. Okay? And the key point here is that you would duplicate the warehouse. You would consider that you have four warehouses all at the same location. Okay? And then essentially you will do a first tour, which is going to be the first vehicle. It's going to start from the first depot, do the tour, and go back to the, you know, go back to the second depot. From there, the second vehicle is going to start okay? and go back to the third thing. Okay? And to the third depot, and then the third depot here is going to go to the fourth, and the fourth is going to uh, is going to go back to the first one. Okay, so what this shows you essentially is that you can you know turn this basic you know multi-vehicle problem into finding a big circuit where the vehicles here are linked. Okay, they would be not linked in time. It's just a modeling trick here. Okay, obviously you will want to make sure that the capacity of the first tour, you know, going from the first warehouse to the second one here, is going to be is going to be the capacity constraint is going to be satisfied. You also want to make sure that the various you know nodes are visited exactly once and things like this. Okay, so in the MIP model, okay, so what you will have to reason about is is flows. Okay, so think again the way we have model, you know, the TSPs and other and, and other things like this. Okay. So if you have four vehicles, what you're going to do is basically multiply the number of edges. You multiply, you're going to quadruple it in a four vehicle, every one of the nodes, every one of the lengths. Okay? So, so that's what you do. That's what this picture is showing you here. Okay? Obviously, you, know, you will want to make sure that there is only one, at most one vehicle traveling between one and two. There may be zero, right? Because you know, uh, one and two may never be you know, uh, connected in a particular tour on a, any particular vehicle. And you also want to make sure that for every one of these vertices, exactly two of these edges are going to be exactly two of these edges are going to be you know, linked to that vertex. So you have to go there and you have to get out. And in this particular case, you have to make sure that this is done by you know, the same vehicle. So you will have to express that constraint. Okay? But once again, here a particular node can be visited by several of these uh, vehicles. Okay? So this is giving you some hints on how you can actually do this. Okay? So you will have to figure out the details by yourself. right? 
yes, so local search is probably the most intuitive way of actually solving this problem. It's actually also uh, an interesting way to solve that problem. I don't want to give you too many hints, right? So, uh, so the one of the ways to do this is to find the first solution. You can start saying, okay, so where can I insert a particular customer? And this is one of the ways. As soon as you do that, and you look at the second customers, there are many insertion points here. There are one more, actually. You can still insert it in these vehicles, but you can insert it before the previous, the, the, you know, customer one, and, or after customer one, okay? So you have many insertion, well, one more insertion point in this particular case, okay? And now when you look at, you know, customer three, now customer three can be put, you know, here, or, you know, in between these two customers, after them both, and once again, on the other vehicles as well, okay? So you have many, you know, insertion points for these things, okay? So once you have a solution like this, okay, so uh, what you can start doing is also moving customers around. You can decide to take them from one vehicle, insert them into another one. Once again, you can view that as a variety of insertion points where that particular customers can be relocated, okay? They can be relocated inside the same vehicle because that could actually decrease, you know, the traveling time or the distance that you are basically doing. And they can be inserted in other vehicles and so on and so forth, okay? So that's the kind of things that you can do. Okay, and so this is, uh, this, is the various, this is the various technologies if you use them independently. So what all these methods that I've shown you are doing is that they are solving the problem globally, and they are considering the routing and the assignments of uh, customers to the various truck at the same time. Okay, now some of the things that we saw in this class is that sometimes you can break these things into parts, okay? So you could first assign the, 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 the customers to the vehicle, okay? While trying to ensure that the capacity constraints are, are satisfied. And then you can start routing these things, okay? So you could say, oh, I'm gonna do an assignment of these things, okay? And then I'm gonna see, oh, given that assignment, how best can I do the various, you know, uh, uh, trips? Okay, and so once again, you can decide to use a particular method for doing this assignment and then use various kinds of methods for solving the second step, okay? So you're basically decoupling the two aspects of the uh, two aspects of the problem, the objective function and the capacity constraints. Okay, so uh, so even the, even the first step here in is not necessarily easy. Okay, so for instance, if you have co four customers of size 40 and you have vehicles of capacity 40, okay, you may say, oh, but how many of these vehicles do I need? Okay, and so you may say, oh, but in the best case, you know, I need basically you know 120 as a capacity, so I probably need three vehicles. But in this particular case, three vehicles is not going to be, you know, sufficient because once you place this, you know, you can't break that particular demand in terms of the three different trucks. Okay, so you have to serve the demand entirely by your truck. Okay, so what you do, what you would need in this particular case is at least four vehicles. Okay, so we have a problem here. Okay, so you need another vehicle. So in a sense, in this particular case, you won't have to find the, the minimum number of vehicles. This is typically something that you have to do in vehicle routing problem. You have always one phase where you're trying to minimize your fleet size. Here, the fleet size is given to you. You don't have to worry about this, okay? You just have to find out how you can actually pack them with the various customers that you have to satisfy the capacity constraints, okay? It's called a multi-knapsack, okay? It's linked to bin packing as well, okay? Uh, but you need to solve that. Okay, and then afterwards, essentially, essentially you need to solve the various sub-tours, the various tours for the various vehicles. So in a sense, the capacity VRP can be seen as two, you know, optimization problems. It's kind of a multi-knapsack, and at the same time, it's a TSP. Okay, so many of optimization problems start combining these things, different parts of the problem, which are themselves sometimes np hard, and that's what makes them very difficult and very interesting in practice. Okay, so uh, many approach can work. You know, you know, you, you have to try various things on this on this particular area. Okay, so uh, you can reuse some of the solvers that you have seen. There are a lot of symmetries in these problems. These vehicles are interchangeable. Okay, so you need to think about how to break that in any kind of methods that you have. Uh, if you use local search, you have to think how quickly you can evaluate, you know, local moves. That's always critical, as I told you before. Okay. So have fun, this is a really nice assignment. It's really close to a real problem. It's really close to things that we do in disaster management, that we do in logistic and supply chain. So it's gonna give you a real taste of what it takes to actually solve these problems in practice. Okay, thank you guys.